Is the new movie Cabrini a faithful portrait of a great Catholic saint? Francesca Cabrini was born in Italy in 1850. After becoming a nun, she founded an order, the Missionary Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. She discerned a strong vocation to serve the church in China. However, Pope Leo XIII told her not to the East, but to the West. So in obedience to him, she traveled to New York. There she served Italian immigrants living in terrible poverty in the Manhattan neighborhood of Five Points. Mother Cabrini had incredible courage and resourcefulness. She helped found schools, orphanages, hospitals, which span continents and whose influence are still felt today. Director Alejandro Gomez Monteverdi of Sound of Freedom and screenwriter Rod Barr weren't interested in making a documentary style feature of Cabrini. They wanted to capture her essence. They had many dimensions of her life to consider. Mother Cabrini was a strong woman in a time when women didn't even have the vote. She was a proud Italian in an environment very hostile to immigrants. She was a spiritual mother who cared for the abandoned and orphaned children in her neighborhood. She was a devoted nun who lived a consecrated life to Christ and his church. And she was a missionary who wanted to bring the gospel to the whole world. I really enjoyed the movie. It was beautifully shot, the music was stunning, the writing was mostly good, and the performances led by Cristiana Del Ana as Mother Cabrini were very strong. But did it capture the essence of Cabrini? In many scenes, there were icons in the background, crucifixes in the background, but that's exactly where they were, in the background. Mother Cabrini's faith was not front and center. One disappointing moment in the dialogue was when Cabrini was preparing her sisters to travel to New York from Italy. She said, we must trust in ourselves, the purpose of our mission. It's very girl boss, but the real mother Cabrini emphasized trust in God and leaving all things to his care. It's not like she completely disregards the importance of God's providence. Later on, she says to her sisters that we can do all things in him who strengthens us. Another missed opportunity was when Victoria, the reformed prostitute, says to Mother Cabrini, there's not enough water in the world to make me clean. To a Catholic audience, this is a clear setup for baptism or confession, which the Catholic Church teaches restores the soul to its baptismal purity. But instead, we have another girl boss moment. Mother Cabrini says, we're both survivors. And then she goes on to say that God gives us free will and it takes great courage to be the person we're supposed to be, which is all fine. But any competent nun would understand that she's not looking for commiseration, she's looking for grace. Still, by referencing water in this way, the filmmakers knew what they were doing and left the door open for a religious interpretation. Later, when Cabrini is shouting at a cruel politician, she says, I am a woman, I am an Italian. And presumably, while the audience bursts into applause, we lose the second half, which is, we are all children of God. Once again, the emphasis is in the wrong place. Throughout the movie, there are lots of examples of Mother Cabrini being a great advocate for the poor, the downtrodden, all consistent with scripture, she makes references to scripture, which are all great. But what motivates Monteverdi's Cabrini? In one scene, Pope Leo XIII says to her, I can't tell where your faith ends and your ambition begins. And the audience isn't sure either. In one sense, the filmmakers did downplay Cabrini's faith, but in another, they did so in a way that made space for two layers, secular and religious. For some Catholics, this is a fatal flaw. But for me, there were enough references and subtle pointers to leave space for that interpretation. Speaking of children of God, we should be protecting children from the pernicious influence of TikTok. Check out Samantha Lehman's video on this topic. 